We are going to start with the history of robotic surgery first. Uh, because history is important, especially in uh, newer technology and trying to understand how this technology has come. Uh, first in the robots, in the medical field, the work started in 1985. This Puma 560 was placed uh, for a brain biopsy under CT guidance. 1988, robot from Imperial College London, he used a robot to perform a prostatic surgery. And 1992, uh, this was used in femur by the orthopedicians. The original robotic system was not what we have today. It was developed under NASA guidance in Menlo Park with grants given by both. Initial idea was to have uh, the people were going in space to have somebody uh, controlling or trying to do surgery in space. That never worked out. Probably that was too far a vision. But uh, this set the ball rolling for development of the modern robots. Uh, then they said, okay, we'll operate in the battlefield near or near the battlefield. But it actually shifted to in the oh, operation theater, uh, surgeon operating on the console and uh, the ro robot doing the surgery. The patents, initially it was uh, computer motion which developed the patents for the robot but these were bought by Intuitive Surgical. This was 2003. And that led to the introduction of the modern day Da Vinci surgical system. Now, FDA first gave clearance in 2000 for uh, Da Vinci's uh, system in certain urological procedures, general laparoscopic surgical procedures, gynecological laparoscopic surgical procedures, some cardiothoracic procedures, and thoracoscopically assisted cardiotomy procedures. Uh, initially, the, there was a lot of cardiac surgeons. The first uh, niche was cardiac surgery, but somehow that never picked up because probably they were too busy or there were better techniques. So that fell in back, but it was urologists who took the lead. And uh, all over the world now, we have seen a lot of transition of laparoscopic urologists to uh, doing robotic surgery. And other branches have followed suit. Gynae, thoracic surgery, uh, some vascular surgeons and ENT and head neck surgery. So there is uh, where we start. And in ENT and head neck surgery, there are two gross indications. One is transoral ro robotic surgery. The other is robotic assisted thyroidectomies. Now other areas are also picking up. There are reports, we'll come to that, what is happening uh, in uh, certain reports of infratemporal fossa lesions being addressed robotically, skull-based lesions, Sleep medicine. Sleep again is a huge area and there is a lot of potential. Uh, sleep medicine, initially uh, we had conventional procedures like UPP and all. Then uh, the chest medicine people took over, the days were of CPAP, BiPAP. Again, it was realized that uh, for static obstruction, we were doing surgeries wherever there is a nasal obstruction, there is DNS, there is adenoids. But for dynamic obstruction, is there a solution? and multi-level dynamic obstruction. Suppose the dynamic uh, obstruction is at the palatal level or basal tongue. So there where robot has a place. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Scott is going to talk more. Uh, now, starting for TOS. TOS was the initial ENT field where there was interest. And uh, initial obstacles were how to, the robotic arm as you've seen, it's huge. The mouth, the pharynx, larynx, they are very funneled organs. It's very difficult to reduce arms. So that was the first problem. The second was the suspension. Uh, you, we were doing suspensions for our laryngoscopies, but to suspend a robotic uh, suspension system and to devise something which gives you exposure not only of the oropharynx, but also of basal tongue, vallecula, uh, supraglottic larynx, with enough space to allow your robotic arms also to go in. And the third uh, problem was of hemostasis. If you were working in the base of the tongue, lingual arteries, there are problems. If you are inside, so you have to have a good hemostasis. So initially what started were some preclinical experiments and uh, these guys they used uh, airway uh, manicure exposure and tried uh, getting exposure of the lar laryngopharynx. Uh, they used initially conventional mouth gags and it was soon realized that robotic arm, there was no way robotic arm could go into a laryngoscope, conventional laryngoscope. So it had to be mouth gags which had to be used. And uh, then the problem occurred at extremes of the operative fields. 
the lateral extremes and the distal extremes, how to reach the, that exposure. So then, uh, the gentleman, Hoxton and uh, co-workers, they use a Dingman and uh, some, uh, retracted the tongue like you saw yesterday with proline sutures and got out the tongue. They did a, a series of cadaveric dissections using 8mm and 5mm robotic instruments. So after this work, the actual work of TORS, it started in Pennsylvania by Dr. Uh, O'Malley and Weinstein. In, this started somewhere around 2004. Uh, there are a lot of centers which have developed. Yesterday it was told there are three training centers and there are uh, 30 or 40 observer centers in uh, USA itself. And Dr. Gannon and Dr. Scott's uh, centers also, I'm sure they fall in that. Uh, but here, the work started here in Pennsylvania. Uh, the, what, what were the advantages to conventional surgery? Uh, if uh, Novice sees the robotic setup, he says, why? I can do everything laryngoscopically. But advantages, uh, one, it's a, it's a very good camera. What you are getting a 3D panoramic view. Uh, then, the there is a full movement of the robotic arm. Human arm cannot. The suturing is possible inside. Then the precision. Whatever surgery you do, there is an element of human hand. If you are using a laser, there is some shake. But here, it is uh, the precision is very, very good. So these were some advantages. And then more interest was generated in transoral robotic surgery. Uh, another, uh, there was another report of a valvular cyst by surgeons at uh, this army hospital. This was 2005. Then somebody closed a posterior laryngeal cleft. Why posterior laryngeal cleft? Because this is an indication where you need to suturing interlaryngeally. It can be done uh, laryngoscopically also. We have also done a couple of cases. But it is easier to do with a robot. Uh, then some results started coming in again from Pennsylvania. Uh, for base of tongue, uh, the, the, the results were for three cases, five cases, base of tongue, uh, oropharynx, uh, supraglottic larynx. Then some bigger work evolved. There, there's a series of 63 cases, again by Dr. Weinstein and co-workers, uh, 2006. Uh, then this was, uh, oropharyngeal cancer and they tried doing neck dissections also. Now neck dissections, they, uh, the way is similar as you do transfer robotic surgery, but this is also tried. Then in two, 2000, work started uh, concurrently in Europe also and uh, America it kept on going, but it was very slow. There were isolated reports coming in till 2009 December. When FDA, it approved Da Vinci surgical system for certain uh, selected malignant uh, lesions of the throat and voice box as well as all the benign diseases. So today you are justified in, if you stick to these indications, it is FDA approved. <coughs> now another series, uh, they took up different oropharyngeal and laryngeal lesions early, 54 patients with good results. The outcomes were better in terms of uh, <coughs> swallowing, dependency on the PEC tube, hemostasis. The cure rates were similar. <coughs> then, this gentleman, he studied the outcome of TORS for uh, HPV virus, positive negative oropharyngeal cancer. <coughs> this was for recurrent oropharyngeal tumors, post chemo radiation. Now, what started happening in certain centers is that instead of giving chemo radiation initially for oropharyngeal cancer, they started doing TORS and then following up the patient with chemo, radio uh, chemo radiation. Uh, advantage of TORS was you could dissect lateral to the tonsils and you could protect the carotid artery which is still lateral uh, in an efficient manner. Now, the same time work on thyroidectomy started. Uh, most of the work in thyroidectomy is from Korea. There are series as big as 1000 cases. Though uh, trans or robot assisted trans axillary thyroidectomy is a cumbersome approach. It takes uh, you have to go through axilla. We'll come to that after in the setup. But despite that, some people are very highly convinced, and there are a uh, lot of last series being presented about robotic thyroidectomies. Then sleep, as I mentioned about sleep, uh, Dr. Scott is doing a lot of work on sleep. He was telling me yesterday. Then uh, Dr. Claudio from Italy for basotongue reduction. The basotongue is an area where, uh, to date, 
what you've been using is either coblation or radio frequency, put it to needles. But the pulp, there is a huge pulp of the tissue there. You can use carbon dioxide laser also. But robotically, uh, it, it, it gives you a better exposure. And uh, only uh, neurovascular structure, you have lingual arteries, uh, the ped pedicle, that is quite lateral. So you can do a midline glossotomy very effectively using a robot for sleep apnea. Now, another report came for uh, pediatric glottic reconstructive surgery. Now, they, uh, for laryngotracheal, uh, for the reconstruction. Uh, this again from uh, Pennsylvania, the, this, two more last series. So in our center in Medanta, uh, the toss started in May 2010. Uh, there was a workshop where the first few cases were done and uh, Dr. Tamar uh, was there. Uh, because our push, they, uh, the geologists were doing a lot of cases, so since it all started. So this was in brief about the history. But the important thing is history is still not complete and more and more is happening every day. All of us are learning from each other and from other centers which are doing. And I'm sure there is more to come. The Da Vinci system which you have today was not made for ENT. It was made for another specialty. We are just using it for our uh, specialty. But I'm sure more better systems are going to evolve, better instrumentations. You will have uh, arms or instruments which can pass through a laryngoscope. Then your uh, barriers of entering into going beyond vocal cords or working on the vocal cords, still you can work. That may get more effective.